Hi, my name is Caroline Hall, and I am an assistant professor of pediatrics at the University of Colorado Anschutz Medical Campus, where I conduct my research. I also take care of pediatric patients with digestive diseases at the Digestive Health Institute at Children's Hospital Colorado. My clinical and research focus is inflammatory bowel disease, abbreviated IBD. Today, I am going to share one of the research projects that I am conducting, focusing on the role of creatine and the creatine transporter in intestinal barrier formation and its implications for IBD. In order to orient you to this work, I want to review the disease of IBD. IBD encompasses the diseases of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Though there are differences between these diseases, they are both diseases involving inflammation of the digestive tract. The development of IBD is believed to be multifactorial, with contribution from immune predisposition, environmental exposure, microbiome, and GI barrier function. For today, we will be primarily focusing on the barrier function component. The intestines must maintain a semi-permeable barrier in order to exclude inflammatory factors, such as bacteria and food antigens from leaking into the body, while still being able to absorb nutrients and water. This involves a tightly controlled process of regulation of the protein composition of tight junctions and adherence junctions. The junctional proteins are stabilized by the actin cytoskeleton. Maintenance of the epithelial cellular junctions is an energy-dependent process. Within cells, energy distribution is mediated in part by the creatine cycle. In this cycle, creatine is brought into the cell by the creatine transporter. The creatine can then be used to shuttle energy to areas of increased need by carrying a high-energy phosphate bond, which can be used to make ATP. Preliminary studies identified creatine as a potential regulator of barrier function. In order to evaluate if expression of the creatine transporter could contribute to barrier function, we knocked down the creatine transporter in a colonic epithelial cell line. The knocked down cells had reduced intracellular creatine, as seen on the left, and impaired barrier formation as measured by transepithelial electrical resistance, or TIR, as seen on the right. In order to validate these results in primary cells, we developed colonoids or mini guts from mice which had genetic loss of cre the creatine transporter. When these cells were grown in a monolayer and their barrier was compared to cells from wild type mice, there was a significant barrier deficit as measured by TIR. Tight junctional protein localization is key to barrier formation, as was mentioned in the introduction. We therefore stain for tight junctional proteins in the creatine transporter knockdown cells, as seen in the green staining. We found that there was a significant mislocalization of the proteins which normally form a clean chicken wire appearance at the tight junctions. The tight junctional proteins were found intracellularly in these cells. We also found dysregulation and reduced quantity of actin polymerization in the red staining. Another important and energy dependent activity of intestinal epithelial cells is wound healing. It requires cell migration and proliferation. We hypothesized based on our preliminary data that the creatine transporter knockdown cells would have diminished wound healing. Indeed, we found in a scratch wound study that wound healing was defective in the knockdown cells with noticeable remaining wounds as indicated by the orange shaded area. Quantification on the right identified a statistical difference in wound healing. Given the important role of the creatine transporter in intestinal epithelial activity, we wanted to determine if there was dysregulation in a disease well known for barrier dysfunction, IBD. Using the University of Colorado IBD Biobank of Biopsy samples, we evaluate for a relative expression of the creatine transporter. We found that there was a significant loss of creatine transporter expression in patients with ulcerative colitis, as indicated by the blue arrow. By separating patients based on disease activity, as noted by the person obtaining the biopsy, we further found that patients with Crohn's disease had diminished creatine transporter expression when their disease was inactive, as indicated by the red arrow, but normal expression when their disease was active. These data suggest that there may be underlying dysregulation of creatine transporter expression and the regulation may be altered during inflammation. To summarize, creatine transporter is necessary for digestive tract epithelial cells to function properly, 
and expression of the transporter is reduced in patients with IBD. These data are very intriguing and suggest possible potential avenues for future therapies, as therapies directed at the mucosal epithelium may avoid the side effects of current immunosuppressive medications. The patient data portion of the study was conducted in adult patient samples. We would anticipate that pediatric results would be similar, but this requires further testing. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this continuing work taking place in my lab at Children's Hospital Colorado and the CU Anschutz Medical Campus. This research was funded by the CU CCTSI and the CU KL2 Fellow Program. I thank these organizations and collaborators for their generous support and the patients for participating in this research. Further details are available in the recently published manuscript in gastroenterology. Please feel free to contact me for further information.